Oh, hey, hello everybody. We are back today talking about September 29th, 1999, Memphis, the Pyramid, Fish's one and only appearance at the uh, very unique and I suppose cool uh, arena. I was never on the inside. You never heard many people carrying on about the inside, but the outside it sure looked cool. And the, uh, the 2001 that we got later on the night was somewhat fitting. I don't know why. I don't know why. Look, I don't think aliens built the pyramids. It's not what I'm getting at. In fact, I don't know why they go hand in hand, actually. Why is that? Well, they, they thought something, too, obviously. I'm not alone here. But we're going to start all the way back at the beginning with Runaway Jim and Free. Driver. Driver being important because there was a contest. Now, the contest was a little weird. Like, trying to, you know, that was just a, that kind of hurt the flow a little bit of the show. It was cool. It was the 90s. They were still doing fun little projects like this. But basically, Trey announces to the audience, um, <clears throat> hey, we're doing a contest. Every song in the first set has something in common, minus Driver. You know, forget Driver. Pretend Driver doesn't exist. And uh, every other song we're playing in this set has something in common other than the new song, Driver. That's Driver. So I don't know if Driver was a bit of a hint or not, but the answer was everything was played in the song of key, or the, the key of the song of key, the key of D, every song except Driver. Again, it's going to keep hammering home the fact that Driver was in this set, and it starts with a D. Every other song played in the key of D. That was in fact. But enough, enough about all that nonsense. You know, it's really just like kind of screwed up the show. It's screwing up the recap here, whatever. They did some fish nonsense. A couple of people won. Shout out to the water wheel. Doing good work for decades now, the water wheel. How about that? So the runaway gym free opener. Both great, obviously. Uh, the free had, you know, sort of had that 90s feel to it. The, the Trey driven effects, a lot of it. But both songs early on. You see, this is a lot of Trey and Fishman. That becomes a theme. The taste was another one after the driver. And it still had, it had bits of like, there were still leftovers from the uh, the kind of funk that they were playing just a couple of years earlier. And now you mix in all of these effects, you know, effects that were from maybe the pre-funk era. So they had kind of combined, you know, what they were doing there in 95 and 96 and 97, obviously. You know, this is no mystery at this point. And, uh, but then the taste was really uh, just a tray, you know, kind of really going solo a few times on the night here. And then with Fishman being right behind him, not, uh, you know, not a lot of page compared to nowadays. Now, there was moments throughout, uh, maybe Stash Page got going in 2001, late in that jam. So then we get a Dirt and a Nelly Kane, Very, a crazy rowdy crowd, too. I mean, just shouting out requests all night and then if the request wasn't fulfilled they would just go crazy for whatever song it was <clears throat> and then you know early on from taste all the way through cities really you know and free and runaway gym it was just a rowdy loud crowd down in memphis on this night but you know very fitting for 99 things things were happening in 99 so so then after the dirt nelly came we get a stash stash in you know we get a nice cool stash going and then the last couple of minutes of stash i don't they they were teasing something or just flat out playing something i don't know the song i didn't take the time to look it up on dot net but i know that was not just um totally improvised you know some obscure song or maybe not so obscure to most of you um to a lot of you but i don't know what that was it was familiar but yet i don't know what it was but yet it was very cool had kind of a uh Dun, 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 dun. Like, I don't know, almost like something you would hear at a sporting event or something. Um, so then, yeah, that's when they broke things up for the contest announcement. I suppose that's what it was, maybe. Yeah, it had like a, like a carnival feel to it, I suppose. Okay, so then that was leading. I'm just, this is just now hitting me looking back at it rather than sitting down and listening. So then theme from the bottom after the contest announcement. Trey, I believe they sang happy birthday to Trey early in the show, maybe before... Um, Somewhere in there, and then uh, again, late, you could kind of hear it on the recording too in the contest announcement, late in there before they started the theme from the bottom, uh, you know, <clears throat> another highlight from the first set. And it's not that any of these things were anything extraordinary, really, or uh, improvised, I should say, really, they were extraordinary, they just weren't improvised. Theme from the bottom, taste, stash, uh, free, runaway gym, all just really good. And uh, a lot of Trey and Fishman, so Trey solos, if you're into that. And uh, really going full rock star on us a couple times. And then Tweezer Reprise ending the set. And I did go look at the previous night. I was like, oh, perhaps they didn't play it the previous night with a Tweezer. Well, they did play Tweezer the previous night. And they did play Reprise the Tweezer. Tweezer Reprise the previous night as well. So then the second set gets going. And this, while the first set was very good, just one worthy of listening to, 
um, the second set, things get a little bit crazy. Now, the God of Jabu, the effects were a little loud. I don't know. A little too much for me there. You need just very subtle looping sounds on God of Jabu, not these just loud sirens like, you know, a uh, natural disaster is on its way. It was just very loud, a little bit clunky, and the Jabu had a bit of a smooth sound to it, but, you know, it, it didn't last long. We get into 2001, and that was the... Uh, that was the apple pie of the night, and then you know the day, and then and then we're down here in Memphis, Tennessee. The the, the jam was broken into two parts here. Uh, here I'm just gonna drift back into my normal voice. You can barely tell the difference. In 2001, um, very crazy effects driven, um, kind of maybe what this like. All right, this is what this song is kind of all about here, <clears throat> and then. Um, like a weird vocal talk box of some sort saying something, die, die. I don't know what that was, what was going on there. And then uh, they finally found some something they liked there, jammed on it for a minute. And then like the tail end of the jam, you got more of a, uh, just a band sound. While the effects were still maybe um, very, uh, very, very off in the background. It was basically, and this, and this is where Paige did his best work of the entire night, I think, too. Then we get into a down with disease. Uh, so that part, the whole 2001 was really good, actually. 21 and a half minutes, and most of it was good. Kind of how, like, maybe that's why I'm not so, you know, this is like, this is an all-timer 2001. They can't all be that, but they, they should be something like that almost every time, maybe. That song should be a little more rare and special. Something like what we got on this night. So then the Down With Disease follows, the third song of the second set. A mostly stayed hard type one on this Down With Disease. Fast and hard. Very, a lot of tempo. Very... You know, you get you like listening to all of Summer 24, there's a certain tempo to the whole thing that was uh, not the same in the 90s, that's for sure. So as they're racing through this and Jam, and then it gets kind of, Trey gets a little, you know, not say, you know, he had his best work soloing in the first set, maybe in the 2001, this Down With Disease, it got a little crazy, not so coherent and on board. And then Billy Breeze back on the train after that, back to back, the back on the train just sort of like abruptly ends. I mean, I guess it was a cool, unique ending, but just slowly, quietly drifts to they just stop. But then they get into mics, you know. They had some big plans here for mics, perhaps. You know, I thought a catapult. Now, while this was a cool set, I don't know what was up with that back on the train. Uh, it was rolling along nicely. You got spits on me. And then uh, the Mike song and the catapult back in the Mike song was a nice little treat. The first part of Mike's, they barely, you know, they jammed it out a little bit. They got through that first jam in Mike's. And then into catapult, very smooth catapult, I'll say, sung well. And then uh, that drop from Catapult back into Mike's ever was perfectly timed. Because then they go back, they go Kung, Mike songs again. Mike's. <laughs> and then I didn't know. So we get a Mike's, Catapult, Mike's, Kung, Mike's, I didn't know. A lot of fun there. And uh, that 40 seconds of Mike's each time, you know, before and after the Kung was outstanding. Some of the best parts of the Mike. <laughs> And then we get the uh, the I didn't know, but the, and then uh, those transitions from one to the other not quite as perfect, cool, but not not nailed. Then into a week of Pog, which definitely gets you dancing, you know. Nice way to end the show, following that with the city's encore. Of course, they're going to play that down in Memphis. And then uh, walking in Memphis, my black cat Floppy he loves that song. It's his theme song. I don't know. Walking in Memphis. I mean, it's okay. I don't love the song, to be honest. But if he likes it, you know, he likes to drive down the road, roll the windows down, let his little wind blow on his little ears. He's like, put on that Memphis song. Boom, we're out of here. I'm like, you mean 2001? Unfortunately, he does not. Love you. I for, oh, shit. John, John, I believe, requested this. Thank you, member John, if you're still here. Almost nine minutes in. I believe it was John. Yes, it was. J-H-M-R-E?